fictional story about Michigan State losing to North Carolina 85-69 in a basketball game. The Sound of Silence The buzz around the Breslin Center was electric as the Michigan State Spartans prepared to host the North Carolina Tar Heels in a massive non-conference showdown. It was a clash of college basketball royalty, two of the most storied programs in the nation squaring off in an early season marquee matchup. For the Spartans, it was an opportunity to make a statement and pick up a resume building win against a top 10 opponent. Led by senior stars Malik Hall and Joey Hauser, this was supposed to be one of Tom Izzo's most talented and complete teams in recent memory. A preseason top 15 ranking showed the level of respect they had nationally coming into the season. But the first few weeks had been a struggle, with Michigan State sputtering to a 5-3 start while dealing with injuries, suspensions, and a general lack of cohesion and tenacity that had been a trademark of Izzo coached teams over the years. The game against North Carolina represented a chance to get things turned around against an elite opponent. The Tar Heels, meanwhile, came into the contest red-hot, having won nine of their first ten games behind the dynamic play of senior guards Caleb Love and R.J. Davis. Head coach Hubert Davis had his team purring on offense, averaging over 85 points per game behind an up-tempo, free-flowing attack that capitalized on their tremendous athleticism and skill. You could feel the weight of the moment as the teams took the court amid thunderous roars and applause from the packed Breslin Center crowd. For Michigan State's four senior starters, Hall, Hauser, Tyson Walker, and Jaden Akins, this was their last chance to get a marquee non-conference win at home. The spotlight was bright, and they knew they had to rise to the occasion. The game opened up as an absolute barn burner, with both offenses trading blows in a sequence of high-level shot-making and transition play. Whenever North Carolina appeared to be taking control, Michigan State battled back, riding the hot shooting of Hall and Hauser to stay within striking distance. But as the first half moved past the 10-minute mark, the tide gradually began to turn in favor of the Tar Heels. Their full court pressure and swarming athleticism on defense started to disrupt the Spartans' offensive flow. Turnovers and empty possessions started piling up for Michigan State while North Carolina capitalized in transition. Davis in particular seemed to be everywhere, getting into the lane at will and making play after play to propel Unk's momentum. He had 12 points in the span of four minutes as the Tar Heels ripped off a blistering 14-2 run to seize a 35-24 lead. The Breslin Center grew tense as the home crowd sensed the game was starting to slip away. Michigan State called a timeout to regroup, but the Tar Heels simply would not relent. Every Spartan's basket was matched by a quick UNC response on the other end. By the time the halftime horn sounded, North Carolina had extended its advantage to 48-34. You could see the frustration and concern etched on the faces of Izzo and his senior leaders as they headed to the locker room. This wasn't just a poor first-half performance, it felt like their entire season was in danger of going sideways if they couldn't find a way to flip the momentum after halftime. Izzo lit into his team during the break, questioning their toughness, poise, and commitment to playing fundamentally sound team basketball. He reminded them that opportunities to get quality wins don't come around often, and they were in danger of squandering this one if they came out flat in the second half. The Spartans retook the floor with a renewed energy and intensity, quickly cutting the North Carolina lead down to eight in the opening minutes thanks to a motivated full-court press that created some early turnovers. For a stretch, it felt like the complexion of the game was shifting back in Michigan State's favor. The Breslin Center crowd was back into it, sensing the possibility of an inspired second-half comeback. But every run the Spartans mustered, North Carolina had an answer. When Michigan State climbed within six at 55 to 49 with 12 minutes to play, the Tar Heels responded with a decisive 12 to 2 spurt of their own to push the lead back to 16. 
The dagger sequence included back-to-back -back threes from Love and Davis that seemed to suck all the air out of the arena. From there, it was a slow, agonizing slog for the Spartans as they were simply bludgeoned by North Carolina's talent, athleticism, and offensive firepower. The Tar Heels made here's more of the story. From there, it was a slow, agonizing slog for the Spartans as they were simply bludgeoned by North Carolina's talent, athleticism, and offensive firepower. The Tar Heels made an abundance of momentum-shifting plays, getting out in transition and throwing down thunderous dunks that drew roars from the small contingent of Carolina fans in attendance. On the other end, Michigan State's offense looked completely discombobulated. Entry passes into the post were getting deflected, dribble handoffs were not executed crisply, and open looks at the basket were rimming out. The frustration was palpable as the Spartans seemed to be tightening up amid Unk's onslaught. With five minutes remaining and the score 75-58 in favor of North Carolina, a torrential downpour began pounding on the Breslin Center rooftop. What had started as a light shower turned into a deluge, filling the arena with the sound of raindrops battering the metal beams above. It created an eerie, hollow atmosphere that seemed to perfectly capture the funereal feeling surrounding Michigan State's performance. As the final minutes ticked away in the 85-69 UNC route, a large contingent of student fans began solemnly filing out, the sound of raindrops on umbrellas echoing through the tunnels. The seniors, Hall, Hauser, Walker, and Aikens, remained on the bench with towels draped over their heads, a picture of utter dejection and disappointment. In the locker room after the game, Izzo fought back tears as he addressed his team. This was supposed to be a special season, a year when all the pieces seemed to be in place for a deep NCAA tournament run. But on this November night, against a top 10 foe, they had come up embarrassingly small. I'm at a loss, I really am, Izzo said with a raspy voice as the rain continued pounding on the roof above. This was a statement game, a chance to show everyone who we are and what we're made of. But we didn't show up. We were soft, emotionally and physically. That performance was unacceptable and it's going to take a lot for us to get this turned around. The senior leaders took the brunt of Izzo's criticism. As captains and veterans, they were supposed to set the tone, but they had appeared disengaged and overwhelmed for large stretches of the blowout. Hall spoke up, acknowledging that the team had gotten punched in the mouth and didn't have enough mental toughness to fight back once North Carolina established control. This one's on us, he said. We're the leaders and we didn't lead at all today. Hauser, who had been fantastic offensively early on before going ice cold, took responsibility as well. I let the frustration get to me when shots stopped falling. I have to be better at moving on to the next play. As painful as the loss was, Izzo expressed hope that it could be the wake-up call his team needed. There was still time to get things turned around, to re-establish an identity and level of intensity required to be an elite team. But it would take a complete mental reset and full recommitment from every single player. Walker and Aikens vowed to be better in getting the team into its offense and setting the defensive tone each night. The younger role players like Jaden Aikens, Pierre Brooks, and shooters Jaden Johnses and Jason Whitens promised to be ready when called upon, understanding that the seniors would need support to get maximum effort from everyone. The locker room cleared out around midnight as the rain finally subsided. The last person remaining was Izzo sitting alone in the hushed stillness. He reflected on the long road ahead, the countless turning points and defining moments this team would face in pursuit of reaching their potential. This was undoubtedly a night they would all like to forget. But Izzo knew deep down that great teams are often defined by how they respond to disappointment and adversity. This humbling loss to North Carolina could be the catalyst they needed to get refocused and recommitted or it could turn into a trend that snowballed into a lost season of underachievement. 
The choice was up to the players. The path to redemption started now for the Michigan State Spartans. All they could do was regroup and get back to work, hoping the sound of bouncing basketballs would eventually drown out the haunting pitter-patter of raindrops hitting an empty arena. Here's more of the 22,000-word story. In the days and weeks following the demoralizing loss to North Carolina, Tom Izzo put his Michigan State team through an intense regimen of physical and mental conditioning. The practices were brutal, with a ferocious focus on toughness, rebounding, and defensive intensity, the pillars that had been lacking against the Tar Heels. Players were running endless lane-to-lane sprints and suicides, going through exhausting full-court defensive drill after defensive drill. If a loose ball hit the floor, Izzo had the team drop and do push-ups on the spot. Every ounce of effort and focus was demanded at all times. Offense took a back seat for long stretches as Izzo hammered home the importance of getting stops, securing defensive rebounds, and regaining the grit and cohesion that had been severely lacking. Players were taken out of drills for the smallest mental lapse or lack of hustle. The message was being received loud and clear, this team would not bed to sleepwalk through the rest of the season after such an embarrassing no-show against North Carolina. Izzo was going to push them to their physical and psychological limits to get them toughened up. For the senior leaders like Malik Hall, Joey Hauser, Tyson Walker, and Jaden Akins, it was a harsh but necessary reset after letting their teammates, coaches and the Michigan State community down so profoundly. They realized the intensity and earn everything mentality had slipped over the first few weeks, allowing complacency and bad habits to creep into their preparation. The underclassmen got their first true glimpse into the demanding, unrelenting culture that Tom Izzo had built in East Lansing over his decades running the program. This was the Izzo way, sheer force of will, mental and physical toughness pushed to their absolute limits in a daily struggle to avoid even the slightest backslide in intensity. There were very few words spoken during the grueling practices. Players just went about their work in determined silence, the echoes of squeaking shoes and Izzo's shrill whistle providing the soundtrack. When water breaks were given, the players chugged frantically, knowing they had just a minute or two before they'd be commanded back onto the floor. The only reprieve came from the presence of former Spartans greats like Draymond Green, Denzel Valentine, and Callan Lucas, who would stop by to impart some wisdom and encouragement amidst the brutal conditioning. They knew firsthand what this team was going through, the trials, physical and mental hurdles they had to overcome to re-establish the Michigan State identity. Green, never one to mince words, laid it out plainly. You guys got punked on your home floor. Plain and simple. Now it's about how you respond. Are you gonna let that roll over and become a pattern of behavior or are you gonna get together as a team, dig down deep, and show everyone what being a Spartan is all about? Valentine echoed those sentiments praising the work ethic he was seeing but emphasizing that it would all be for naught if they didn't bring that same intensity and edge to every single game. You can work as hard as you want in here, but if you don't take that fight onto the court with you, it doesn't mean anything. As the conditioning program dragged on over the next couple of weeks, the Spartans could gradually feel their bodies, minds, and competitive spirits being reshaped and reforged through Izzo's harsh methods. The intense fatigue gave way to a renewed sharpness and hardened edge, that proverbial chip on their shoulder seeming to grow after each punishing practice session. When the next game rolled around, it was clear this was a vastly different Michigan State team mentally and physically from the squad that had been dismantled by North Carolina. Diving for loose balls, bodying up defensively, and simply wanting it more than their opponent, it was all on full display from the opening tip. While the offense wasn't always pretty in those first few games back, the defense and rebounding was suffocating. Loose balls that may have been conceded a few weeks earlier were now being pursued with reckless abandon. 
transition opportunities were being created by getting floor burns and outworking the opposition. Hall, Hauser, and the other veterans set the intense, hard-nosed tone, but they were receiving tremendous support from the role players and younger guys who had been battle-tested throughout the torturous practices. Guys like Pierre Brooks, Jaden Johnses, and Jackson Kohler looked like hardened vets rather than wide-eyed freshmen and sophomores. Inch by inch, game by game, the quintessential Michigan State identity started re-emerging. The fire, passion and